Receipt Capture, now available in QBO, allows users to upload their receipts to the Banking Center, where the receipts can then be added or matched to an existing transaction just like in the QBO bank feeds for bank or credit card accounts. There are three ways to add these receipts. Drag or drop directly into the Receipt Center. Email to receipts at quickbooks.com after setting up a user or taking a picture through the QBO mobile app. For instructions on how to add receipts by either method, please visit www.qbooksconsulting.ca slash qbotips.html Once a receipt has been uploaded through the QBO receipt capture feature, you have to add or match the receipts. So let's begin. Click on Banking. Click on the Receipts tab. Click on the For Review tab. Now you should see all your uploaded receipts listed here, ready to match or add. If you see Match in the Action column, then the Receipt Capture feature has found an existing expense. By clicking Match, the receipt itself will be added to the existing transaction. Just ensure the QBO has found the correct transaction to match to. Let's view this $9 parking receipt before matching the receipt to it. I have the $9 expense open in another tab so I can show you that currently no receipt has been attached. Now let's go back to the Receipts tab in Banking and click Match. Just like in Banking, once this receipt has been matched, the item is cleared off the For Review list. If we go back to the $9 transaction, and refresh the screen, you can see that the receipt has been added. If you see Review in the Action column, you need to tell QBO what to do with this receipt. So let's click on Review. On the left hand side you can see a preview of your receipt. You can zoom in to better read the details on the receipt, zoom out if you need to, or pull the receipt up or down. QBO tries to extract info and fill in many of the fields, but you should still review and correct all relevant information. Please note that at this point you cannot split the expense into multiple lines. You can only edit and add additional lines after you have posted the transaction. Next, let's review the various fields. The OCR reader tries to pre-fill the payee field. Confirm the payee is correct. If no name has been selected, then choose a name from the drop-down list or add a new one. In the bank credit account, choose the account that the expense is coming from. If you choose an account that is not a bank or credit card account, you're going to get an error message. So we're going to pick Visa. Now in the payment date, the OCR reader should pick up the date. Just confirm it is correct. For the account category, choose the GL account you wish to post the transaction against. QBO may pre-fill this field. If this is the case, confirm the correct GL account has been selected, otherwise once again you can choose from the drop-down menu. In the description, fill in any relevant information. For the total amount, the OCR reader should input the amount, but confirm it's correct. For the tax type, choose the relevant sales tax code. In our case it's HST. QBO should calculate the correct HST amount based on the tax code chosen, but you can override this amount if needed. In the memo, fill in any relevant information. For the customer, you can tag this expense to a specific customer if desired. The class field will be available if you have the class feature turned on in QBO. The reference number is usually the invoice or transaction number. Sometimes the OCR reader will pick this up, otherwise fill it in. Once you have reviewed all the details for this transaction, click Save and Next or Save and Close from the drop-down menu. After saving the receipt, QBO may find that there is an existing transaction to match to, which you will see in the Action column. Otherwise, click Create Expense to post this transaction and have the receipt attached. Please note 
that unfortunately QBO will not find a match to an existing supplier bill, so be careful not to create a duplicate transaction if the bill already exists.